Daniela, and I will give you the Alang OTP team news update from OTP 26.0 and up until now, and a few glimpses into the future. So, uh, we, the OTP team, have made a lot of shell enhancements for OTP 26. So, for instance, now you're able to prototype your functions and test them directly in the shell. Ooh. Like done for the factorial function here uh, in this slide. Uh, we also made some other enhancements for auto-completion. So you can auto-complete on variable names, record names, record field names, file names, etc. Uh, and uh, we also made a new subsystem for the terminal so that the Alang shell experience should be the same independently on what operating system you are running. And if you want to see the new shell in action, uh, please don't miss uh, my coworker Frederick's presentation uh, right after the coffee break. Uh, so, maps are collections of keys and values, and have never had a defined order. Uh, but due to some implementation details of small maps, uh, you would get an order when you converted the map to a list or printed it, that many users fancied. And when the implementation changed in OTP 26, <laughs> these users were a bit disappointed <laughs> and maybe surprised. Uh, so that's why we have an IO format modifier so that you can now print your maps in key order. And we also have an iterator function so that you can iterate over your maps in a defined order. And if you want to see more examples, please take a look at our blog post for the OTP26 highlights. So when it comes to security, we are continuing our mission to have or to remove and change configurations so that we have safe defaults. Uh, so in OTP26, you will no longer be able to get a TLS connection with an empty option list. And this is because then we don't know which certificates to trust, and we cannot verify the authentic authenticity of the connection. Uh, and so most web servers, they will put their trust in a certificate bundle that is uh, distributed by the operating system. And we now have a public key function uh, so that you can easily load these uh, and get an authenticated uh, connection towards web server, as for instance, www.alang.org. Uh, and if you'd like to know more about certificates, I will give you a talk tomorrow <laughs> about uh, building trust in open networks. When it comes to our low-level socket API, it is now supported on Windows, which is an important step uh, on our long-term goal to phase out the INET driver. Uh, but most of you will not want to use this directly because it adds complexity and it's not platform independent. Uh, so you will probably want to use it through our behaviors, Gen TCP and Gen UDP. And to do that, uh, you have to provide the option in at backend and say socket. Uh, so please do that. Try it out. Tell us how it works and how we can improve it. Uh, we want to know. Uh, computers are good at many things. Keeping wall clock time is just not one of them. Uh, so due to legacy, we have several time warp modes uh, to keep or to handle time corrections, uh, more or less adequate, because uh, when providing uh, soft real-time properties, such as Alang does, uh, keeping accurate time is really important. 
And finally, in MTP26, the best time warp mode is made the default. Uh, but however, this requires your code to be time warp safe. And in short, that means don't use Alang now. And even if you will have a time warp safe usage of Alang now, it will have scalability and performance uh, problems. So please take a look at our user's guide in Arts uh, to find out how to get rid of all your uses of Alang now. We also made some optimizations, and they happen to work out really well for base64 encoding and decoding. Uh, and this will make many of our protocols, as TLS and SSH, etc., very happy, uh, because they use so-called PEM files to store certificates and keys. And these files, they use base64 encoding. So uh, let's move on to 26.1. Uh, for those of you uh, who need to run your applications in U.S. governmental environments, you will be very happy to know that we now support FIPS uh, for our crypto application uh, with OpenSSL free star dot versions. Um, if you have happened to use a triple quotes somewhere in your code base, uh, you will now get a warning about this. I'll tell you a little more why in a minute. Uh, you will also get a warning if you try to match floating point 0, .0, 0.0 in your code. And this is because when you match on something, you're checking for term equivalence. And uh, plus 0, .0, 0.0 and minus 0, .0, 0.0 are actually different terms. Uh, even though the values are considered to be the same. So, moving on to 27. Um, we are planning to uh, transform our documentation to make a more consistent and better look and feel. Uh, and to do that, we like to have triple quoted strings uh, so that uh, we can make multi-line uh, strings in a nice and easy way in our documentation chunks. Uh, when it comes to observ observability, uh, if you look at your processes in Observer or in a crash dump report, for instance, many times it's fairly easy to find out which is the behavior that is implementing this process. Maybe what is the callback module? but you don't know actually what is the work of the process that we're looking at. Uh, so that's why we're um, working on process labels, so that the application should be able to specify a short description so that you might know something more. Uh, maybe, is this a server or is it a client? And maybe, what protocol is it running? Yeah some uh, things that will help your observability and debugging. Uh, and looking into the future, uh, we are interested in set theoretic types, and we're following closely what Elixir is doing with this. We are thinking of maybe providing a JSON library. We're looking into that. We want to improve our public continuous integration uh, and we want to add more property-based tests. Uh, we're also looking into sigils, compiler, verifications, uh, and maybe having airline code coverage empowered by the JIT. And most of this will be done uh, in cooperation uh, with the research community and the open source community. And you can follow discussions on airline forums uh, and uh, on our GitHub pull requests and uh, participate. So that was all. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank, thank you, Ingela. This is wonderful. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. <laughs> Don't all speak at once. Don't be shy. Yes. 
thank you for all the great features to come. Uh, so you mentioned um, sockets and Gen UDP and Gen TCP acting as a interface towards sockets. Yeah. How about Gen SCTP and, and the SCTP support in, in sockets? Yeah, well, uh, that is also uh, in the plan, of course. Um, but um, um, that is, of course, um, um, it gets the lowest priority as it's uh, less used. Uh, but uh, when we're finished, it should be there too, yes. So we, we're, not, we're not forgetting about it, but uh, we were, we're prioritizing uh, that it works good with TCP first, and then UDP, and then we have SCTP. Yep. Someone over here had raised her hand. Um, just wanted to mention, so we will also have set theoretic types for Alang directly. Um, and there will be a talk this morning. Hopefully a few people might be interested in coming. And let's see if we can also get it for Alang, what we have for Elixir on the way. Any other talks? No. Well, I, I just want to take the opportunity to thank well you and everyone in the OTP team uh, for all of the hard work you're doing to kind of keep the ecosystem going and running. You know, I think you're the unsung heroes. And <laughs> big, big thank you for everything. Yeah, let's hear it.